It's the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, this video is probably gonna be wonky seeing as uh, while I was trying to write the script, uh, uh, while the series was being released, uh, the idea was as an episode released, I would watch it, take the clips I need, put it in the script, etc., etc., and then suddenly, I don't know how, I was probably cleaning out old files and all the clips are gone. I had to completely redo everything 10 episodes in, which is just a little less than halfway. But still, I hate redoing work. It is the bane of my existence. I don't rewatch shows, I don't replay video games. I just, but I, I knew I'm gonna have to attack this sooner or later. So, sorry if this review of season four took a little bit of time, I was fighting myself. If you remember, Master Fu released, relinquished guardianship of the miraculous box, the miracle box to Marinette and then lost his memories. Dooming Marinette to follow in his footsteps. And now she has the ultimate big responsibility of protecting the miraculous herself. And I would show you clips of all this in order to better jog your memory, but... You know, who thought it would have been a good idea to give all this responsibility to a kid? Master Fu should have had someone training underneath him a long time ago. Honestly, he's not that responsible. And yes, I understand he was trying to train Marinette, but circumstances forced him to relinquish ownership way earlier, even though I feel like he should have asked about this. Like, hey, did you know about this thing where you lose your memories? Do you want that? No, here you go, too bad, like, Jerk! If I was chosen to have that much responsibility at that age, I couldn't handle it. I don't- I'm not even sure I could handle it now. I'd have a mental breakdown. Gabriel fixes up that Miraculous now that he has Master Fu's translation of the special book thingy. Now he can combine Miraculous just like Marinette did. Marinette fiddles with her box of Kwamis. Thanks for the photos of your bedroom and of Adrian. I need your opinion on them because I know that you have great taste, Adrian. My name is Luca. Are we gonna do the, the whole love triangle or love angle thing where she has to choose between two boys even though one of them is clearly better than the other? But the writers want to add it because it riles up the fan base and we're getting tired of Adrian and Marinette not actually developing whatsoever. So instead of actually developing something, we just add new elements because woo, who needs progression? I just, I just want Marinette to stop being Annoying. You are officially Jagged Stone's number one fan. You, uh, you win a prize. Whoa! Proposing already? <laughs> she moves fast. Oh, okay, never mind. You know, if she really can't have a social life being a superhero, you'd think she'd just choose not to have a relationship until she figures things out. But then again, I guess with her personality, that's not likely. We need napkins. I'll be quick. <sighs> just... Stop. The more you try, the more you hurt people. You know, yes, I usually have more to say when I complain, but like the show is still fun to watch. And now the plot is complex enough to where it's even more engaging. I'm gonna try being more positive during this video. I never knew my father. So when I just couldn't deal with it all, I'd take refuge here and the melody of the water would console me. And I also write poems in my diary. And I listen to super underground bands that you've probably never heard of. Aren't I just so deeply troubled and charming? I know I make fun of Luca, but I actually like him. Don't come for me. I will make jokes wherever I can. I do not care who. I can't have a boyfriend. As long as Shadow Moth is a threat to the people I love, it's too dangerous. Yes! I mean, oh no! Marinette is so sad. It's almost like too much responsibility was put upon her at too young of an age, and suddenly she's being forced to grow up too fast. And heck, in one episode, she's matured a little bit, so... That's progression. Can't wait for them to take it all back. Hi, it's Ladybug, leave a message. I like how the power of the Kwamis were smart enough to give them their own superhero phone number. Not even Superman has that. And now Adrian and Kagami's relationship is developing, oh my. What if when I'm being silly, I'm really me? Uh, uh. Wow, that was... Goodness, um, I can see why there's so many fanfiction of Adrian being a bottom. On guard. 
Uh, sorry, I forgot something back in the locker room. Oh. Oh, no, they're just recycling the same character progression with Adrian. He's going to realize he can't pursue a relationship because he's in the same boat as Marinette. And now Kagami has the charm that Marinette made for him. Symbolizing that now Kagami has Adrian's heart? Or, or it symbolizes that Adrian is now in Kagami's hands? I lied, too. I lied to my mother so we could see each other. I lied at every fencing lesson so we could spend more time together. I lie because I want to be with you. You lie. <gasps> because you don't want to be with me. You know, Kagami and Luka really don't deserve this. And then she gives back the charm, symbolizing that she's not ready to accept him. Why is this so good to me? And Marinette is so overcome by heartache that she pushes her friends away. Well, then maybe I don't want you to be my friends. Get out! I want to tell you about a friend of mine. You know Rena Rouge, right? But even though we can't tell each other everything, we trust each other. Are they going to have Ladybug reveal her identity? to her friend or not. Because this is usually the point where it happens and it makes life easier, they're pushed against a wall, or they they have to, or they risk losing like literally their entire social life, which you know, they need to in order to not go in, they need to hold on to, to not go insane. And so that there's someone you can talk to who knows what you're going through. And at this point, I really hope they do. Stop. Stop everything. What the heck? The Peacock Miraculous is supposed to make Hawk Moth so powerful, that shouldn't be possible. What's the point of giving him a power boost if you throw it away three episodes in? At the very least, Alia needs more development, because I can understand that Alia becomes more powerful or be develops the, the willpower to push against Hawk Moth, but that hasn't happened yet. We need more, we need more time for that to develop. Otherwise, she's just like, Marinette should be like, dang, Alia, you're really strong. I, you should be a main hero. Why aren't you a, a main character? Doesn't really matter. They make up, Marinette accepts that she needs to be single, and her friends forgive her. No secret identity revealed. It's all good. You're right. I am alone. You know why I broke up with Luca? It's because there's something that I can't tell him. I keep secrets. I lie all the time. Always another way. No. Not this time. If I tell you, things will never be the same between us again. It'll mess up everything, maybe even destroy it. And I... I'm Ladybug. Woo! I saw it coming from a mile away, but woo! That is such a relief. She's going through the process of being a modern superhero. And it makes me feel so much better that she's going to have someone that she can confide in. I'm not gonna hold my breath, they're gonna maintain this character growth. But if they do, it seems like they're actually listening to their fans. I bet you had no idea Adrian and Kagami aren't seeing each other anymore. I have to go and console Kagami! Huh? Don't you mean you have to go and console Adrian? There's no way we can be together anyway! And besides, I have no more feelings for Adrian. You see that? <laughs> That's character growth. It's about time. I love how they animate plaque eating. Like, it's just there and then it's not there. Mm -mm. Oh, some coffee. I don't want to get back together with Adrian. You felt that somehow you weren't worthy of him. You're strong, you're perfect, you're meant for each other. Is Marinette projecting onto Kagami? This is weird. This is a really weird way to cope. Just came here to do a few laps and wind you up. I mean, unwind. Oh boy, I wouldn't want to kiss you. I mean, keep you, keep you from your job. So old habits die hard. I'm still holding out hope that they don't backpedal on this. Let's just give it a second. What if the rules in the spell books are not a finite set of existing rules, but only what the Guardians had learned about the Miraculous so far? And Ladybug gets a power-up where she can give people charms so they can't get akumatized. Ugh. You're the one blushing and stuttering and saying silly things every time that you see Adrian. Adrian is perfect. Ugh. He's perfect for you. Kagami, you shut your whore mouth! Don't take away her progression! Then she gets a visit from the Celestial Guardian, or basically Master Fu's old friend, and now Marinette is being challenged about whether or not she's a true guardian. Also, apparently the staffs of the Guardians have compasses that track the miracle, the miracle box. Wow, can't wait for Hawk Moth, I mean Shadow Moth, to use that compass against them somehow. You know, something I realized after watching this show after not watching it for a while, it's fun. I know there's people who hate watch it, and I understand why. And some people just legitimately dislike the writing, and I understand why. But watching this show and removing myself from my critical brain that I have to adapt for videos, the show is just kind of fun to watch. 
I legitimately enjoy watching this show. Clearly the writers are doing something right. They eventually prove that she can be trusted. I only mention it because of the compass and the staff. Now we introduce... Uh... Mom, can you put together a dozen more croissants for... Zoe! Uh... Zoe is the half-sister to Chloe and is super duper nice, but needs to always pretend she's mean around her garbage family. I wanted to be an actress, but then I found myself acting all the time, trying to please everyone until I couldn't do it anymore. And now it's happening all over again, I just can't. We end up burying our feelings deep here. If you want, I can make some space for you. You're gonna tell her to just give up on her dreams so that she can fit in with the family? That's just like, what the heck? Zoe gets acomatized as expected. Hey, that's our job! Hey. <laughs> Zoe decides to start being herself and make friends away from her family. How, how dare giving the lead role to my half of a sister who just came out of nowhere? 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 And when Chloe gets acomatized again out of jealousy, Zoe gets the Be Miraculous and becomes its new holder. Wait. When is Chloe's character going to be ruined? Like everyone's been telling me, you know? Because this just makes perfect sense. Chloe couldn't be a hero because she's a horrible person. And her character development was that her mom didn't really love her. And now that's been fixed. But her mom's a horrible person. So they're both gonna be a horrible person. This does not interfere with that. Chloe nev never really changed. And even when she had her chance to change, she failed in season three. Am I missing something? I can understand people wanted her to have like a whole character arc, a change in character, a reformation kind of arc, you know, like a character should. And I am, I understand that people are upset that Thomas Astruck, the director, undid any development that she had going for her. I could, that's, that's completely valid. But also, this still makes sense. Is it fair that Chloe gets booted off the superhero team because she had her identity discovered while everyone else also had their identities discovered, but they don't get booted off? Yes, because Chloe endangered innocent people. She did it for her own gain and she regularly, willingly, works with Shadow Moth. She can't be trusted. At least when Luca was being like absorbed, he's like, oh no, this is a bad thing. I shouldn't let this happen. Chloe's like, come on, bring it on. I'm ready, let's do this. Anyway, Rose gets a miraculous too, but the episode she was in was boring, so whatever. Here's her costume in case you wanted to see it. After Shadow Moth almost fooled everyone by infecting a miraculous with his optigami, Marinette gives all the other miraculous of the fox in case she needs backup. The season starts with the same pretty clever use of Fox illusions. Alia creating illusions of Ladybug and Alia and having Ladybug say that she can't be a miraculous holder to make Shadow Moth think that she's not a hero anymore. But now Rena Rouge can't be seen by Shadow Moth in order to maintain the lie, so she sort of become the guy in the chair, if you know what I mean? Or a rogue? Rena the Rogue Rouge. Rena the Rogue the Rena Rena Rouge the Rogue. And of course the order of these episodes are very out of order and sometimes don't even make sense. Like Marinette's still trying to get Adrian's attention, but wait, maybe this episode was supposed to be before she said she's not pursuing a relationship anymore. And you'd be wrong because she has her new creation outfit she got after she vowed to have no more relationships. <laughs> Who still wears belt bags these days? <laughs> ha! They have to say belt bag instead of fanny pack because fanny pack means something bad in Britain land. <laughs> oh, you Brits and your goofy language that I also happen to share for a, to a certain degree, but I like making fun of our differences because it makes me feel superior. <laughs> yeah, it was so obvious that it made me mad. Give me that ridiculous belt. Do I have to say it? Also, little tangent. I know Ladybug is mad because she's under the magical influence of Psychomedian, but I kind of like seeing her angry. I'm realizing, I'm realizing I don't get that sort of emotion from her like ever. And I mean like proper anger. I want to see these characters with more of a range of emotion. 
It doesn't break their character if like one time they decide, okay, I've had enough. I can't deal with this anymore. That's normal. That's human. Like this and like that. <laughs> I don't think anyone can make me laugh more than Marinette Dupin Chang. You got that right, because she's a fucking joke. Okay, back to the actual plot. Gabriel invited his sister-in-law and a brother-in-law to take back the super special something that his brother-in-law took from him. You know, the ring. And Gabriel is realizing Natalie is super important to his operations, but she's still recovering from the Peacock Miraculous. People don't understand how important it is. I'm still holding the fan. People don't understand how important it is to have someone who's really good at organizing and planning like me and with my friends because I'm the only one who coordinates our schedules and co uh, so that we can all hang out and spend time together and I'm the only one who's coming up with ideas for all of us to do stuff for so that we can actually have time as friends together. But do I get recognition? Sure, yeah. But only when I complain. <laughs> you forgot me and your ridiculous family. Adrian was never your prince charming Chloe. Will Sabrina, ninja smokescreen. I... I still think random explosions are hilarious. Also, Marinette went straight back to trying to get Adrian's attention. Pretty sure they backpedaled on her character progression, but hey, it was nice while it lasted, I guess. Or maybe it was more to just get Luca and Kagami out of the picture because they were done with the whole weird love slash crush dynamics going on. I don't know. The point is, I'm disappointed. Honestly, seeing Gabriel be honest at how he struggles without his assistant makes him more of a rounded and relatable character. I wish the main characters had that level of depth. Marinette sneaks into the party, and this party is pretty scary. I know it's an evil plot, but he takes their phones and scrambles communications and locks all the doors. This feels like the beginning of a horror movie. Why did you steal my ring, Felix? Mom really wanted me to have it since it belonged to her family, so I plan on giving it back to you tonight. Don't worry, Uncle. She won't know. I had a copy made. You're an intelligent young man, Felix. Or maybe he gave you the copy. Honestly, Gabriel is so easily fooled. First Rena Rouge and now this. At least Rena Rouge was smart. This is just bad. It's a fake ring. He gave me a fake ring. Wow. I'm so surprised. Felix, Adrian's identical cousin, meets up with the Santa monster. How do you plan to make me do that, Shadow Moth? But wait, how could Gabriel be standing in front of him and talk to Shadow Moth? Santa monsters? They don't know what those are. You really think that Gabriel Agrest could be Shadow Moth? <laughs> he doesn't have what it takes. And I don't need your power. So Shadow Moth akumatizes his own Santa monster clone. Obviously, Ladybug takes care of it, but now she gives who she thinks is Gabriel and ch a, a charm so that he can't be akumatized again. So now Shadow Moth can't abuse his own clone as much. Wait, that's some smart writing. Of course, he can just have his charm stolen to abuse it more, but still. Also, now Shadow Moth understands the power of the miraculous is way more powerful than he thought. Felix tore off a piece of the Santa Monster's pants, and now he sees Gabriel with the same pants, but without the tear. So he knows Gabriel is Shadow Moth. A little surprise for when you come back, my dear nephew. Oh man, this episode is big. Oh my gosh, he's going to have Felix join him as an evil sidekick because he needs a new assistant, and that's why they kept talking about it. Holy crap! But also, I don't feel like a tear in his pants is conclusive evidence. He could have just changed into a similar pair of pants. So basically, all her friends starts getting miraculous in standalone episodes that don't really progress the overarching plot, just like Rose and now Melen has one, and she can make a bunch of small mouse versions of herself. Not only is Marinette not committing to not fawning over Adrian, but now her friends are trying to have Marinette talk to Luca and make up with him. Okay, well, they want them to talk and be friends, but still, guys, come on. Oh my gosh, Julika got the Miraculous of the Tiger? Whoa, I never would have guessed. And the tiger bullies Julika into not whispering everything she says, and... <laughs> Whoa, wait, that Miraculous is actually really cool. I kind of want that. I know there's a difference in their pay when actors go from a non-speaking role to a speaking role, but do you think there's a pay difference between a speaking role and a whisper role? It hurts more not seeing you than seeing you. Buddies? Buddies. Okay, good. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm okay now. <laughs>
And to make it even better, Cat Noir is feeling bad for constantly flirting with Ladybug when he knows she's not interested and decides to stop being creepy and move past her. Oh my gosh, it's happening. They're growing. They're actually having character growth. At long last, then because Cat Noir is having relationship trouble and Marinette is having relationship troubles, they kind of hang out with each other as friends to talk through their relationship issues. And like, gosh, this is great. I loved this episode. It's rare when I find a Ladybug episode where they just kind of talk and be chill about it and just hang out. Of course, it ends with them confessing their love to each other, but not realizing they're confessing their love to each other, just like always. And dang it, you French, why are you so good at this? Ah, oh, it's so cute. Don't get me wrong, I like their relationship but I also don't like their relationship. We also find out Kagami is a massive weeb. Ha! One of us, one of us, give us your boys love recommendations. And then Cat Noir decides to continue fawning over Ladybug. Why am I not surprised? Alia is now having trouble since she has to lie to Nino that she can no longer be Rena Rouge in order to keep it the lie that Ladybug won't give her the miraculous. Now Alia is gonna have the same issues that all heroes have. I'm talking about something I shouldn't be telling you. Alia is a superhero. She's Rena Rouge. What? Shh. I'm a superhero too. I'm Carapace. You know, I feel like Nino shouldn't be allowed to have the miraculous now. Like, I understand Marinette needed to tell Alia, but Nino is just being insanely jealous. Like, dude, come on, commit to the cause. Nino gets akumatized because, honestly, because he's pathetic. He really doesn't deserve to be a holder. At least Luca was like, oh no, I'm being akumatized, run away, Marinette, but because he knew it was wrong. Nino was all like, oh heck, yeah, I'll destroy Cat Noir and Ladybug for you. I'm more concerned about myself than other people. And it all gets resolved in the end because of course it does. I still can't believe Ladybug entrusted Oya and Nino with those miraculous. They know each other's secret identities. So why does she make it a rule that we can't know each other's identities, but it's okay for them? Wait. Okay, fair point. And then Alia tells Nino she is still Rena Rouge and what's really going on. And like, this whole episode is just to establish Nino and Alia's relationship along with make Cat Noir upset. Adrian has a lot of time where he self-reflects, whether it be about his love life or when it comes to his personal life and trying to figure out what he wants to do other than modeling. And he's getting to a point where he's feeling lost. And frankly, I love it. I Love internal struggles. It's probably why I enjoy drama so much, but like drama isn't enough. I need self-reflection. I need hurt and pain. I need them to change and grow and challenge themselves. That enough is making this, this season way more engaging for me. Luca continues to be obscenely charming and cool, and they're still just friends, totally friends, who hold hands and Adrian is having that typical high school slash college career existential crisis. I don't want to be a rock star like my dad. I make music, but that's not my career, it's my nature. I always want to try new things, but the things I want to do, the things I forget to do, and the things I just have to do, it's a lot. But if I think about what I really actually want to do, nothing, my mind is empty. And that's totally normal. For instance, I wanted to be an author, but the likelihood of me being successful and actually sustaining, you know, a life for myself was very slim. Then I went to college and went into computer science only to realize I liked learning about computers, but not implementing what I learned. And then what I really realized is that I liked creating things for other people to enjoy. That's why I always like to try and crack jokes at school. And after gaining some traction with my videos, I kind of realized this works for me. It doesn't really matter what it is so long as I'm doing something that other people can enjoy. But keep in mind, your job doesn't have to be something you particularly enjoy. It really just needs to be something that you can do and you don't hate. Not everyone can love their job. So long as you feel competent and confident in what you're doing, you're on the right track. But all of us have to do jobs that we hate eventually. And sometimes we're stuck in jobs we hate because we have to be. And it's not fun, but it just goes to show you that you can do everything right and still lose because it's not your fault. That's just life. Jean-Luc Picard. 
Would you really call this a dream? And then he turned into a cucumber. <laughs> Funniest shit I've ever seen. Every child has a dream. You just need to get your memory back. Just let me touch you. Uh, Whoa! Uh, Stranger danger! <laughs> Police! We got a pervert on our hands! Then Marinette gets hit by Wishmaker's beam and turns into her childhood dream. But now Luca knows Ladybug is Marinette and turns back in, in time to fix things. Then Cat Noir gets hit and Luca knows his secret identity too. And also Adrian legit has no idea who he wanted to be as a kid and conform to what his parents wanted. And if that isn't depressing, my gosh. And that's just depressing. I don't know why I bother wearing my uh, Cat Noir t-shirt when it's just gonna be cut off the, major the majority of this video. Anyway, this is why you shouldn't be too controlling as a parent because you could emotionally stunt your, ch your children and they won't know who they are in the future. And I'm sorry if that hit too close to home for some of you guys. Yada, 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 they beat up the bad guy. And Luca lies saying that he doesn't know their identities, which honestly, smart. I would have done the same. But then Alec, the TV host, becomes a drag queen that helps people fulfill their dreams. I can't wait for bigoted parents to see that on Disney Channel and have a full temper tantrum swearing that Disney is trying to make their kids gay. First, like normal ass people we've spent years treating like freaks. Next, they'll be shoving man sausages down our children's throats. Good thing us God-fearing Christians don't do that to our children. Now go back to reading the Bible or you'll burn in hell. You aren't allowed to be who you are because I don't like it. Sorry, that one got a little too close to home for me. Hey, Simple Man, take this! So you know how Ladybug learns some new powers? Well, Shadow Moth is doing some training too. And he's trying to hypercharge his Akuma to power through those charms Ladybug made. And it looks like it's working. I know technically we're still progressing the characters, but this also feels like we backpedaled again. Like she learned something and then they made it obsolete. And until she learned something new, the writers made it lame. Thanks to the all powerful forces of destruction and creation, I'll destroy this world that took you from us to build a new one. Wait, that's your plan? Dude, just go to therapy. Real question, if you were offered a job as the secretary to a, an evil villain hellbent on taking over the world, but you got six figures, you got full benefits, and you got vacation, how many of you would actually take the job? Leave, leave, the, leave, the, leave it in the comments below. Because like, come on. Also, the villain is hot. Adrian is actually getting so bad with his own struggle that he'll ignore a threat to Paris because his dad asked him to do an important interview. Like, my guy, you gotta make sacrifices for this. And that Grandmaster comes over and grills Ladybug because she need everyone's help when Cat Noir could have handled this easily with, a, with Cataclysm. In fact, you should find out who Cat Noir really is so you can have better control over him. Okay, okay, all right. What if you knew who he was. Would that work? Luca is going to have an earpiece to listen on Ladybug and Cat Noir, and she'll ask him his secret identity, then rewind time to before he tells her so that Ladybug doesn't know who he is, but Luca does. Wow, Luca is really trying to make sure he keeps the secret of him knowing both their identities. I'm Adrian Agrest. <laughs> was it? It's really me, see? Adrian Agrest. And then she's so stunned at the truth that they run out of time and now she can't go back in time far enough to forget who he is. Wait, so does that mean she's gonna stay knowing Cat Noir's identity? Are the writers gonna backpedal on this? They're gonna backpedal on this somehow. I know they are, I just don't know how. Don't mess with my heart like this anymore, writers. And Ladybug is too stunned to tell Adrian her true identity because of course she would. The the writers can't give us everything we want. She explains everything to the Grandmaster. Marinette doesn't see Cat Noir and Adrian as the same person, so now she's conflicted because she still doesn't love Cat Noir. It took some time, but Marinette finally reveals herself to Adrian. I just found out that one of my closest friends is the person I love and admire most in the world. And they start being cute and having a relationship until Gabriel overhears him and connects the dots that he is Cat Noir. And then he shows Adrian the hidden chamber where his mom is. Gabriel, you are so messed up in the head. And then he reveals he's Shadow Moth, and then he akumatizes his own son because he's so obedient, he ends up having to do what his father says, even if it's akumatization. They're gonna backpedal on all this. I know they are. Gabriel gave Adrian the power to speed up time. More time shenanigans, I don't know. 
but they're gonna fi they're gonna figure out a way to undo all of this. They gang up on Marinette and speed up her miraculous so she loses her powers faster. But she has a watch charm that she sends to Luca and tells him where the Kwamis are to help. And Shadow Moth finally gets the miraculous. But in order to go back in time, more than five minutes, he needs to use the Kwamis power without a holder. And the end of the world is coming now. And that that well. <laughs> Hmm, that's how! They're just gonna use Saz to turn back time, I knew it! He goes back to when they learned each other's identities, but because they used a Kwame's power, time is going crazy! So I guess they don't need to worry about Gabriel, but now they have a new problem. And they fix the time problem by... I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me, honestly. What did you want to talk about earlier? Up on the Eiffel Tower? Oh, nothing important. Forget about it. Screw you. Screw all of you. I can't stand you writers. You can't keep doing this. Back to the actual plot, Adrian is upset that Ladybug is managing without him and he's feeling like no one needs him anymore. Adrian. That's a good thing. Take a vacation. Then he just quits being Cat Noir. Dude, come on. No one would give up superpowers just because they're butt hurt. I, I get you're sad, but this is stupid. And then Marinette is like, oh no, he's in love with me and I'll keep breaking his heart we should split up. And thinks maybe I'll give the miraculous to someone else. But, oh wait, you'll know his secret identity and we know that that's not going to work because we just saw an episode where it doesn't. It doesn't matter who it is. Plague's great idea is to create a whole new persona for Adrian to have and change his superhero name to trick Ladybug into thinking he's a whole new person. This episode is a little obvious with its direction. Ladybug starts feeling bad for ignoring Cat Noir's feelings and Cat Noir is realizing he shouldn't have been selfish. But Ladybug is developing feelings for his false persona and the roles are switched. He tells her he'll give the ring back to quote unquote Cat Noir, wink wink, because Ladybug literally can't focus with the perfect and adorable persona he made. So they learn their lesson and go back to what they do best, and Adrian accepts that he is Adrian and Cat Noir, and apologizes to Ladybug for being selfish, and Ladybug apologizes for not being nicer to him and his if, if feelings. And their character arc is complete. Now Adrian can stop moping. And I'll admit, this did not go the way I was expecting. I'm not sure I'm entirely happy with how they wrapped it up, but you know, I guess it's good enough. Ladybug crushing on his persona was funny at least. I would have done this differently though. It feels a little underwhelming. And shocker, it was resolved by them talking. You know, like most conflicts that any self-respecting adult would do. I feel like this could have been avoided if they just talked, but okay, fine. Shadow Moth hatches a whole new plan. He needs Ladybug to get reckless and needs someone to get her to take risks. And he gets some random kid and gives them the power to forget their fears. And we find Felix again, right when Adrian was going on a several month long film shoot that he doesn't want to go on. Gosh, how convenient that he has an identical cousin. Freedom is something you make, Adrian. For starters, you gotta stop doing everything your father tells you to. And Felix manages to steal Natalie's tablet, then breaks into Gabriel's secret safe and finds the miraculous, and then steals them, even freaking out at seeing the perfectly preserved body of Gabriel's wife. If anything were to go wrong, I want to leave something of the aggressors behind. I'm trusting you with my wife's ring. Gabriel, your devotion to your deceased wife is adorable, but come on. How do you not see the solution to your problems that's right in front of you? You don't need to stop loving your wife, but you also don't need to obsessively hold on to her. And then Kagami, who I still believe is amazing, drills into Adrian. My cousin is gonna talk to him and- You're letting your cousin do things for you now? Who's pulling the strings of your life? It's never you! You're only good at doing what people tell you to do! But he's too late to change anything. Now Shadow Moth thinks his son is gone and starts a whole new evil plan. Pegabug will bring him back, and together we'll go talk to his father. I'm ready to risk everything to not lose Adrian! Right there. That's the risk powers at work and they have no idea what's going on either. Felix puts on the miraculous, but turns out it's a fake. Get punked, nerd. Head straight for him. If he attacks us, that'll make for some great footage. Well, that's just what photographers and cinematographers are like, you know? That's not because of evil superpowers, that's just them. She gets the squad together, turns out that big monster can copy their power, so that's an issue, yikes. Oh, right up, shelter! Right up? 
she still active? Yeah, I figured he was going to find out eventually. Luckily, Rena sees that weird frog mark that's making everyone risky, and then the Santa monster gets Cat Noir's cataclysm. But you know who hasn't been hit by risk? Felix, who Marinette still thinks is Adrian. She teleports to Felix and gives him a miraculous, and now he knows her yo-yo can teleport directly to the other miraculous. So now he has superpowers, doggy superpowers. He gives a whole new meaning to the golden retriever boyfriend. Thanks to your superpower, you can locate any object that you've touched before. Like this? Felix, you're such a good villain. They go back in time to see what the akumatized object is. Back in the present, they find the stuffed toy and undo their risk powers on everyone. But the real Adrian knows that's not Adrian. And then they hurl the Santa monster into the sun in a really dramatic and epic scene. Alia has to give back the Fox Miraculous now that it's actually too risky for her to be a hero. Now Felix has the Miraculous and a ladybug doesn't know it's not Adrian. And now they don't know where he is. Then give me what I ask for and I'll give you something better in exchange. <laughs> All the other miraculous. So he gives up the peacock and steals the yo-yo. And now Gabriel has all the other miraculous. Shadow Moth announces how powerful he is to the world and tells them that non-stop chaos is coming unless he gets Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous. Miraculous! I've lost everything! You haven't lost me. I didn't listen to you, I lied to you, I kept you at a distance! We're gonna get them back one by one, and we'll make sure this never happens again. This? was probably the best season yet. Holy crap, that ending was incredible. The construction of this whole season was outrageously smart, and I did not see that ending coming. I fully thought Felix would join Shadow Moth. However, this is way better. And now I understand why Cat Noir focused, why like focused so much on Cat Noir being jealous of Ladybug, giving everyone else miraculous, because it was foreshadowing this event for when they wouldn't have the, the, the other Miraculous to rely on. And the only person that she can truly rely on is Cat Noir. Oh, that's good. Chloe was seriously thrown under the bus in this season, but now I don't care. I don't want to see more of Chloe. I want more of Felix. And I'm hoping in the next season, they focus more on Adrian learning to be independent and self-respecting and stand up against his dad. Because if they don't, then what's even the point of them tackling that in this season any, at, all, at all? Because like, that didn't really go anywhere yet. And did you see Ladybug blush over what Cat Noir said in the final scene? That's how they solve the love triangle problem. They don't need to know each other's identities. They just need to learn to love each other as superheroes. And then they can still be together and they can still be happy. And bada bing bada boom, it all works out. They, ever, they, get, they all get what they want. I don't think they'll do that. But still, Zoe, I want my fan. Zoe is a boring character. She isn't really a bad character. They gave her enough foundation for them to build off of. She just hasn't had a lot of time to progress. And because she's not that important, I doubt they're going to progress her. And I would have liked if Chloe had a reformation arc. However, I think it'd be better if she had a corruption arc. I like her better as a villain. But what do you think? Tell me if you're still upset about Chloe and Zoe. Also, you can get stickers and trading cards on my Patreon linked in the description below, along with my social medias. Follow me there too. I hope you enjoy this video. Share it with your friends or don't if you don't agree with what I said in this video. I don't know. I hope you stay beautiful and keep playing.